So Baldur's Gate 3 came out, and I'm honestly surprised as to how many game devs are coming out on Twitter saying that we shouldn't expect this kind of quality. They have their own opinions and we have ours and we're the people just playing the game. But you have to admit that the people who are playing the game and having an opposition against those who are making the games well, there is a problem here. I want to talk about that. I want to talk about how the AAA industry is, and I want to talk about the devs who are making the games within the AAA space. And I always thought it was the upstairs brass, the CEOs, the directors, and going all the way down that's really wrecking AAA today, but it could be the devs themselves. Welcome back to the channel, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for watching the video. Again, if you want to be part of this discussion in terms of the subject, comments down below. I'll be looking forward to it. Anyway, let's talk about AAA games, AAA developers, and why Baldur's Gate 3 seems to be blowing everything up. For a time on Twitter or X, whatever you want to call it, there were a bunch of people arguing, and this involved the game devs from other companies or wherever they're from, talking about how Baldur's Gate 3 is kind of something that other gamers shouldn't be looking forward to. This is the kind of quality which is a miracle to them. Well. I have a question for that. Why does that have to be a miracle? Why can't we get that quality of gaming in the AAA space? I don't understand why these devs on Twitter are out crying saying that Baldur's Gate 3 is making game, like seeing how that game was so great, but it's making gaming and game developers look bad because of just how good it came out. I don't understand why AAA game developers can't just have that kind of quality within their games. And I understand that it's not just the game developers, it's, you know, higher ups, the directors, the CEOs, wherever the direction of the game they want it to be the game developers have to make that come true but you can't discredit the game developers themselves it seems to me that they have a mindset that a game should be this way it's like when elden ring came out and everybody was like oh elden ring is just so good but then developers started attacking elden ring because it wasn't like all the standard video game development practices that they have in the West, right? They're, they're like, wow, where are the AIs? I don't understand, How, where do I go? There's there's no map, there's no menu, there's no compass. There isn't three different freaking bars for your health, right? And there's a picture that I'm gonna show on screen that perfectly defines what a Western game developer is looking for when they make a standard game. You gotta understand that I don't know what these people are being taught, when learning how to game design but you know it doesn't have to be all the same trending things all the time there doesn't need to be an open big freaking world the ui doesn't have to look like it has to have lines graphs numbers letters all over the place that can confuse the mind it can just be a regular freaking video game you're making a video game and at the same time shouldn't you be trying to put in your best to make the best quality video game i'm not really understanding maybe i'm missing something maybe there's something i don't know i understand that making a video game is hard but you can't just say oh making a video game is hard so we're not going to put in a lot more work no that's not how that works buddy if the game making process is hard no one's going to care work hard okay make the game that you want to make don't half-ass it don't sit there at your leisure don't say oh that's impossible to make no do your best do your best i understand that it's hard but that's a very lame excuse you're gonna look at somebody like a construction worker right and their job is hard are they gonna half-ass it no because that building needs to go up and it needs to work and not crumble like a chinese building that that's a whole other thing that you should probably research yeah yeah a bunch of chinese buildings fall down because of half assery you want to put in 100 percent in your work and something that you're passionate for but that's the problem here part of the problem is that people who are coming out of college and going into game development may just be doing this to make a profit to say hey i got a good job i'm going to try to make a profit and i'm going to do the bare minimum you shouldn't want to do the bare minimum. You want to do your best, 
when it comes to this kind of work to, to be in this line of work you want to do your best you know the saying of how we as people as gamers are thinking that there's just a bunch of incompetency in the AAA space when it comes to game development not just directors but game development well, it's starting to show, right? Boulder Gate 3 is showing that. And I understand what people are saying. You know, it makes sense. There are some people who are game devs that are making sense on Twitter. I'm not going to rule them out. It is hard. There are some techniques that people don't know. And you have to think about how the old guard of video gaming, right? The old guard, the old devs, they're not really passing down their techniques. Their competence isn't flowing to the next generation. The next generation is coming from wherever they're coming from you know and then you got to think about the gamers the gamers are also being raised to think that games should be a certain way especially the young ones and that might influence the newer game devs that are coming into the space i don't know it's a theory honestly this is a hypothesis but what is true is that gamers are being raised in a certain way to think games should be a certain standard you know like okay Fortnite, right? Fortnite is a good example. Plenty of games want to be just like Fortnite, a free to play game where kids are throwing money at it and playing it all the time, right? There's a couple of factors that you should know when it comes to the AAA space, one of which is that they want your money. That's the first thing. The second thing is that they want your time. And the third thing, they want your commitment, right? So I know time and commitment is kind of interchangeable, but what I mean by commitment, I mean that they want you to stay. And when I say they want your time, I mean they want you to log on and play the game. But the thing here is that these kids, I, I shouldn't just say kids, that's not fair but younger gamers, right, that go into these games, they're playing their League of Legends, their counter Strikes, their, their Valorant and all that stuff. There's kind of a common theme here. There's a common system that's within all these games, and it's usually live service or extra monetization that's within, you know? And that's what I think that we should probably slow down on when it comes to the AAA space. We should slow down on. I don't believe AAA gaming is dying. I don't think it's in this major negative space that people keep talking about. I honestly think that AAA space is, you know, it's 50-50. You have a 50% chance of getting a good or a bad game. Depends on the company, you know? Like if From Software comes out with a new game, God damn it, I'm getting that game. But if Activision Blizzard comes out with a new game, I have to look at it with the most skeptical eye because it's like, is it gonna try to get me to spend money? Is it going to be shit? And I hate saying that, but that's what it is. That is what it is, you know? If Activision Blizzard came out with a game, I'm not going to be very trusting and i'm not going to pre-order the game because i know the game has some sort of caveat of which is going to be very negative that's just how they made their games in the past few years but if we're going to go back to gamers and how i think they're being influenced by the games of today yeah i think the standard for a lot of people and what they think a game should have is like free to play extra monetization and battle passes now there was a conversation that asmin had with his chat but i'm going to be real quick about this they were talking about how you know overwatch one's loot box is better than overwatch's two battle passes now just to talk about that real quick both are bad to me i don't like either one first of all loot boxes is gambling and if you want to know a fair definition of what i see as gambling you don't have to spend money to get money back but give something up that is precious a resource or an item put a stake on it bet on it to get something back of equal lower or higher quantity or quality so that you win something back and not have to lose what you stake but if you lose you have to give up that resource or that item right that's gambling to me you know gambling is giving up money and what you see in the loot box whether or not it is good or bad in terms of quality is up to you as the one who is winning that that skin that character or that you know the the, the whatever comes in a loot box in overwatch one it's never the characters but it's mo more or less the skins right now what they were talking about when it came to asmongold and his chat is that people would want the loot box back because you're getting more of a reward that's the key the reward is what's important here and that's the problem with the AAA space is that what they're doing is drowning people drowning gamers with just reward after reward after reward whether it's a loot box or a battle pass 
loot boxes is made to be like a slot machine oh yes i got that very rare legendary skin and i only spent five dollars or 10 hours of my time right you spend 10 hours to get 10 loot boxes or well that's not true you're going to spend 10 hours to get like 30 or 40 loot boxes but you definitely spent that time to get that legendary skin or whatever like that for me i don't give a shit about rewards like that those kinds of rewards are kind of superficial i don't really care for them having a skin does not matter to me whatsoever because i don't care what i look like in terms of a multiplayer game but when it comes right down to being rewarded rewards are fine but how you are rewarded is what i'm worried about when it comes to today's modern gaming gamers are raised to think that rewards should be just given to me or given to them like every other time when they log in when they switch a menu right you get rewarded for doing those things you get rewarded for killing three of something you get rewarded for doing something in terms of crafting you get rewarded for freaking uh you know switching up something in your systems in your menus for whatever reason and you get rewarded for just breathing right you get rewarded for breathing i don't, I don't know why you're getting rewarded for breathing but you're breathing and you're getting rewarded for that which comes back down to what is going on with developers and why they're just going to continue stuff like this do, do they think that this is a positive thing that these young gamers or the younger generation is basically being manipulated because of this whole reward system and i didn't even get into the battle pass the battle pass can be just as bad and here let me explain the battle pass is made to do one thing one singular thing to keep you playing the game. You don't want to lose out on the rewards that's within that battle pass, but depending on the battle pass, how much growth you have in that battle pass, you may be spending a hell of a lot of time playing that singular video game than any other games or any other activities because you just need to get that character that's within the battle pass which is what happens in overwatch 2 they would put an, uh, a character in there and you know a lot of people will say oh it's easy to get to like 50 or 70 you just need to play the game a lot right this is not reality in in some certain stance especially for for me i i can't play a video game for more than maybe like two hours or even an hour a day because i got life here you know i gotta do that i gotta rest up for tomorrow so i gotta go to bed i got a house to clean you know I, I can't just be playing video games all day yeah people will say oh just spend more time playing the game and eventually you're going to get the prize that that's the problem with battle passes is that it asks for your time and it's limited and i know it's a long time like before the season's up or the season passes up it will take like a month and a half before the next season but i don't have all the time in the world nor does everybody else in the world and if you're going to ask me for my time just so that i'm going to miss out on, on, on a prize that you put so deep in the battle pass that i have to i have to play for hundreds of hours or let's be lenient here maybe 50 hours you have to understand that some people are going to get picked off at that kind of system some people just want to play the game and that's really what a video game should be is just playing the freaking video game you know so we have young gamers or gamers today really paying more attention to the rewards that they're getting right and the game developers think that that's what we want at, in general and that's the good thing about it that's what we need to put into our video games that or the standard practice of what modern AAA video games are, and I'm not really too sure what that is nowadays. Like, I look at Saints Row and it really, really disappoints me that, that this is what they think that a modern game is supposed to be. I miss the times where all I had to do was buy the game, play it for however long I want, put it away, and come back to it whenever I want. The rewards within the games weren't superficial they weren't just skins knickknacks things that you, that is just basically cosmetic i don't give a fuck about cosmetic skins and rewards i don't care about them they do nothing for me that's why i don't like them but give me a badass super flame sword in elden ring or elder scrolls right give me that give me some rare armor some cool ass boots and if it just so happens to look good then it looks good right give me a new mount 
a new pet from Final Fantasy or WoW, you know? Give me that rare armor from RuneScape, but do not give me a reward for just breathing or logging in or killing three tree bears or uh, going after a, a certain rabbit in a certain mission that might be stupid and con completely confusing or as simple as open the menu and change the music from 50 to 60 percent and then back again and get a reward for that getting rewards for opening your menu by the way is dumb it's just dumb but i don't know that is an opinion that i am having and there are plenty of opinions that other people can put out into the world including in this video if you guys want to join in this discussion like i said before leave your comments down below and i am sure to read it however I do ask for a tip and that tip is liking the video. I also want to be paid and your payments is subscribing. Thank you very much for watching the video. Again, if you have any kind of uh, discussion that you want to make, leave it in the comments below. Tell me what you think about all this, about the AAA space, about these game devs and how gamers are being raised in this modern time. And I'll see you guys next time. Have a good one.